everybody. Let, uh, welcome. So we have today we're going to learn about a career in interior design and we have um, Car Carol at CK Hoffman to um, tell us what's the career, what's the path in order to become interior design. But before that, let's do a little housekeeping first. Make sure you check in. That's how your teacher knows that you're here and that's the, that's the QR code for the check-in. Um, this is the great question document that you can reference to if you have questions and the evaluation form. So the most important thing is the evaluation form. Make sure you um, fill it up right after the event so we can give you credit. And that is served as your attendance. So it's not the check-in, it's just for your teacher to know that you're here, but the evaluation form is your attendance. And um, if you have any questions, put it on the chat. And so if your phone doesn't work, the QR code, we have the bit.ly link also posted in the chat and a link, an actual link to our website if the bit.ly link does not work on your computer. Um, if you need a closed caption, please, um, you can make a request and then we'll, we'll be able to grant you the closed caption. Um, what else? You can actually turn on your camera. You don't, you're not going to show up to the, um, to the recording. It will just, it's just nice to see and the presenter can see who's behind the camera and um, ask questions on the chat or um, you can raise your hand and ask question on the, um, on your mic. And we'll have Carol do the share of this career event. Hi, everybody. And um, please, uh, the, the moderator, tell me your name. Oh, um, I'm Goldilocks, and we have Catherine also. At OK. Hi, you two. Mm -hmm. Goldilocks and Catherine. And I'm, um, let's see. OK, so you've turned it over to me. So somebody's in the um, waiting room. So I'm going to let them in. And I appreciate that um, intro, and I really, this is my second time, you know, present, presenting to this group. The other time was super formal, and they wanted a um, PowerPoint presentation, and we couldn't see your faces because of privacy. And actually, um, is it a, um, I see a couple faces, but we can, or, you know, can you stop recording if, uh, if it's a privacy issue? I really would like this to be a little bit more casual and. Um, so um, they're not gonna show on the recording, even if they have the camera on. Okay. So I see Judd, <laughs> so that helps. And I see Catherine and I see Liberty High School. So uh, again, I really want this to be informal. I'm terrible at reading the chat. So if one of the moderators, if there are questions, um, you know, just please tell me. And um, gosh, I see a lot of names and that makes me feel really happy. And I'm gonna share the screen. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about my journey. And actually before I even do that, um, well, no, it'll, we'll do it simultaneously. So just hang with me and I'll tell you about my journey. And I was certainly um, in your shoes many years ago, but here I was in school, I was in kind of a creative, I had an art degree, I was an uh, art major in high school, and I had an interesting journey. So right now, this is my website. Um, I'm Carol Hoffman, I'm the CEO of CK Hoffman Design, and we're an uh, interior design and a general contracting firm, uh, which really sets me apart from the other designers. And I think it's a really great path. And you're going to understand why in just a second. Um, can you guys see I, somebody was trying to get in and I didn't click on yes, it? We got it. Yeah. Oh, OK, that's fine. All right, I'm going to let you do that. 
So anyway, I, I do have an interior design background. I actually ended up uh, getting a degree from in design from UCLA. I was almost 25 years old by the time I got that degree after high school. I worked in retail. I took design classes. I traveled. Um, and then, you know, right around 21, 22, uh, my parents are thinking, hmm, you're going to ever finish school <laughs> and do anything. <laughs> and, uh, and I just have to say, I do feel that I was a good student. I'm a smart person. In the day, UCLA was not as prestigious as it is today. Um, and I had the good fortune of having cousins and my parents were alumni. And um, I entered as a sophomore in winter term, which is just so unusual. And I had my cousin who was a PhD candidate at the time, type up my entrance um, essay. And being that he was a PhD candidate, he felt that that essay could be a little bit better. <laughs> and he completely rewrote it. It was stunning. And I got in. So, um, you know, that was just a tremendous exposure. And I got a general design degree. It's almost like getting a far, fine art degree in but instead of painting, uh, we had classes like graphics and photography, um, video, ceramics and textiles, those kinds of things. But I don't have a formal interior design background. Um, so again, with all these, again, the un unconventional uh, approach to getting the career. In my senior year, I randomly got a, um, internship with an interior designer. And when I graduated from school, I had one year interior design experience. So from that, it launched me into other jobs. I learned drafting and some of the more nuts and bolts through community college. I took um, building construction classes. So it was, it was just a very through the back door way of becoming an interior designer. So and then fast forward, I moved to Portland. I, I had children. Uh, my husband and I were developers. We uh, built houses with other builders, and I took a pause from uh, professional work for 20 years to raise children. And about four or five years before my youngest child was about to leave for college, I started CK Hoffman Design, which is now 13 years ago. And I just put my foot to the metal. I found people to do color consulting and established my name. Um, I was on house. I'll show you my profile about that in just a little bit. But the, the real kicker was eight years ago, I decided I should get my own general contractor license as opposed to working with other contractors, which was um, just an epiphany and it launched my business. It is a much higher um, price point in terms of profit. It allows me to stay um, connected to the project from start to finish. And I have to say today, now I'm going to show you our um, employee roster. So here's me, I'm the CEO, and I have just made an arrangement with this lovely lady, Kat. She was uh, our material specialist. She was one of our vendors for six years. She joined me a year and a half ago. And just over this last year, she has um, mostly by sweat equity, not cash, but by January of 2022, she's a full partner of CK Hoffman Design. So she's, um, she'll be half owner. We have a universal design specialist uh, consultant. And we also have another interior designer and certified agent place consultant. These two are part-time. So let's see some of our, our bells and whistles and maybe it's on the front page. So we um, have been in business for uh, eight years. And well, this, my business is uh, 12. The interior design piece is 12, but the, the construction piece is um, about eight years. So 
we have been voted best of house nine years in a row. And actually, maybe I'm just going to take you over to our house site. House is a great place to look for designers and look for design ideas. So um, here's Kat and I. So we have been voted best of house for nine years in a row. Um, we have over 51 projects and we have over 62 reviews. So again, I, I'm honored to be with you all here today, but I would no different, no, not smarter, not more clever than any of you today. I just really put my foot to the metal. I got my schooling taken care of. I established myself. And you know, we are rated as one of the top 10 remodeling design companies in Portland. So I'm super honored and proud. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you all about today. Um, you know, what are your questions? What are your aspirations? Um, and just based on that, I would love to just take a few questions. I don't want to just keep talking about me. I really want to know how I can connect with you all. And, and I, I don't know uh, people's backgrounds either. So if we can, you know, get a little bit of information on that or ladies, maybe can you share with me? So, so yeah, so can you read the chat or uh, do you want me to ask you the question? If you could read the questions, that would be handy for me. Okay, yeah. So um, a pointer middle, middle school, because we have middle schools attending also. Oh, good, good, good. So yeah. they're asking, what is um, what is your typical day work like? Oh, that's a great question. Um, okay, so I'm going to take you um, to a project because it's a little bit more interesting. And I was just chatting with... Um, my partner, most of what our days are like, day in and day out, is a lot of paperwork and it's marketing and it's billing and it's purchasing and it's tracking things. It's not particularly glamorous, but this is really what we're all after. So when we do get a job and you know, to be successful for us, um, we need between six to eight projects a year. So we don't have to do a lot of work, but we have to find six to eight people who are pretty much doing a fairly big ticket item and uh, do a large remodel for them. So if, if you forget about the fact that we spend a lot of time doing marketing, social media, paying bills and all of that, this is what really it's all about you know, for us as designers and probably for you all as creative people. So why is this green? Oh, here we go. So this is a house in Beaverton. This is the before picture. And this is very common. Uh, my clients are, you're in Hillsborough, probably um, Hillsboro, West Hills, Forest Heights, a little bit of Loa. That's sort of my target area, Southwest Portland. And the houses are typically, 25 to 40 years old, and they need a cosmetic refresh. So they're still working, but it's a little bit dated. The tile and the cabinets, um, not really the new thing. And the open style kitchen is really, uh, really popular. So HTTV has really driven this idea of um, open floor plan. So this is the before picture um, for this, these products. This project, we had to bring in a structural engineer and figure out if we could remove that wall. This, this is the wall with the TV. So you can see there's like a breakfast nook on the left, enter in the kitchen and then this wall, right? In between the, the, the kitchen and the uh, family room. So we talked to a structural engineer, we found out we could not remove the whole wall, but we could leave a post. So we took out that wall and we put up a post to keep that ceiling up. And we created a really beautiful new kitchen for them. Um, here we go. That's what it looks like when you take everything to the studs. Uh, I always find this super, super fascinating. Um, all the walls are not static. Usually there's electrical and sometimes plumbing behind it. And then you have to put in insulation, but this is what a, a house looks like before there are walls. 
There's another angle. And then not only did we finish off their kitchen, then they said, oh, well, we need furniture for our living room. So this is a dream job. You know, usually um, projects aren't as extensive as this, but it's really fun when you get to do everything. They need a new breakfast nook table. Okay, and here's the, the back end from that kitchen. So we completely removed that wall, redesigned the kitchen, and we had to incorporate that post. But now they have this beautiful, bright new kitchen, new appliances, new lighting. It's so different. All the flooring is consistent from side to side. And that's almost exactly that same picture that we had at the beginning. So it was quite the transformation. Um, do we have more questions? So, yeah. So, what are the most and least rewarding aspects of your job? Mm. Well, this, I have to say, I always say the best part of my job are the pictures uh, at the end. It lets me know that all of the hard work that we did to even get the job or, um, Track the to track construction is not easy. Um, you have to have a lot of patience. You have to have a lot of knowledge. You have to have people skills. Um, the best part is the picture. The least favorite part for me, math is not my strongest uh, subject, and there is a lot of math uh, having to do with design and construction. Not only understanding how to um, size materials but how to create a quote for your client, how to make sure that it's accurate, that it reflects what it's going to cost and that you make your own, um, a decent profit. So in the you know, early, early days, um, and I've had a lot of help with my, from my kids and uh, different professionals learning to do an Excel spreadsheet. I did not have the benefit of learning that in kindergarten, like my children. So, um, and actually, I'll show you this project. It was a beautiful project. I really uh, am super proud of it, but it was complicated. And I wasn't super knowledgeable yet um, about the billing piece. And I didn't have everything dialed down with my subcontractors just yet. Um, I made $11 an hour. And I almost cried because it took tons and tons of time. And I'm thinking I could have made more money pumping gas that entire time. It's called the School of Hard Knocks and I have never done that again because now I know how to use this Excel spreadsheet and I double check my numbers, double check my numbers, double check my numbers. So um, this is another before, fun before and after. So I'll show this to you. This is a house in Tigard. Again, just very simple. Maybe that 25 uh, year old range. This is the guys taking stuff down. So um, very common, you know, first we have to get your stuff out of there. So the client has to move out and then we have to demo. So for this particular project, we had to take out all the flooring and out of the cabinets and, um, and everything. Basically the client has to either move out or move into another part of their house for, three to four months and let us take over. And I'm watching the clock the entire time and troubleshooting all the various things that could possibly happen. Um, there's typically eight different vendors, eight to 15 different vendors and subs for every project. So I have to deal with a lot of people uh, again, a lot of numbers, different personalities. Some people are texters, some people are phone people, some are talkers, some are really quiet. So, so uh, that piece is quite interesting. And you know, again, to go back, the, the pictures are my, my very, very, very most favorite. So again, if this is the after, let's see, where is that before? It went from this to this. To me, that's spectacular. That's, <laughs> uh, 
that's the most fun part is to see that that just blows my mind that these not only the what that I would have the skill and the um, design sense and the experience to put this together, but that somebody would actually trust me um, in this particular kitchen. Even, even when I made $11, $11 an hour, this kitchen was $50,000. Um, you know, and that's something that I need to learn. It should have been 65. But to me, 50,000 sounded like a lot of money, uh, but it isn't when on a project this, this scale. So I, I learn every day and it's, it's so interesting, um, but it, it's extremely humbling to have somebody trust you um, with that kind of money and such a big, big project. And then to see at the end, this project also had a lot of painting, it was, I think you remember from the beginning, it was just all gray. Um, that they would trust me enough to, you know, give me large amounts of money and that I'm actually able to, you know, uh, deliver this. It's super, super cool. Um, I'm going to look at my outline, but are there any other questions that we have? So the Evergreen Middle School is asking what specific trainings would you recommend for this career? Okay, so, well, and if you heard my, um, my story, it was not uh, straight and narrow, and I don't know if there is specific training. That said, um, I'm in favor of school 100%. Um, middle school, high school, junior college, trade schools, uh, college, graduate degrees, as much education as you possibly can get. So certainly some sort of creative um, aspect is important. Um, but as I mentioned, that math skill is super, super, super important for, you know, just the nuts and bolts, paying your, your subs and paying yourself and making sure that you're billing correctly um people skills that's something that i never really thought about and that i find more and more is super helpful uh, the sales piece so i've gone to lots and lots of sales training i don't consider myself to be the best salesperson but putting people at ease explaining to them what you do uh how much it costs why they should give you that money and not somebody else. That's tremendous to know that, or to be able to explain to a client, oh, um, shoot, you know, we had a little bit of a drawback. My contractor stepped through your ceiling. And so now there's a big hole. Um, we're going to take care of it, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's, it's a very stressful time for the homeowner because they don't know what we're really gonna do. Um, are we really going to perform? There's all kinds of nightmares out there, these different things that people have said. And um, it's true. And I always do assure my client that we're gonna take care of you. Um, I'm gonna go back to that, that question. What is the best and the worst? Cause I think I told you the best, but I don't think I've ever told you the worst. Um, the worst is, when things go sideways and you have a very difficult client who is very angry and confrontive. And it's only happened a couple of times. That's definitely the worst. So there's two things that I have learned from that. One is to have my people radar on there. And if I think that somebody seems excessively eccentric or mean or demanding or asks a whole lot of questions, I'm telling myself that person's a red flag. I don't want to work with them. So maybe I will not be as attentive or as friendly. I always try to get them to decide that I'm not the one <laughs> rather than tell them. <laughs> but I make it so they're, they don't really like me and they don't move forward. Or in one particular scenario, and this is very, very helpful. It was uh, in Washington. Uh, Washougal is, was very far away. You actually do need a separate uh, contractor license in Washington, and it's very easy to get. 
and you have to learn how to pay their sales tax, but it's really not a very big deal. But this particular client was clearly a headache. And so uh, what I ended up doing was telling him, you know, we can do the design piece for you. It's almost done. I'm so sorry. I am not licensed in Washington. I don't have a crew ready for you. Um, we're going to finish up everything. We're going to hand you all the specs and we will work with whatever builder that you pick, but we're not available to do it. So um, that took a lot of guts on my part. It was a very large job, would have been a fee in excess of $100,000. I just knew that that would be a nightmare and I found a way to get out of it. So two things is to have that radar and you know to figure out how to diffuse the situation or and even people who are really calm and nice and typically friendly if something really weird goes wrong during their project or maybe you know after 5 weeks they've just sort of had it and uh, they might snap a little bit carol you know why isn't this done you know how come blah 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 and you know and it just again, have learned to be really, really calming and read some different psychology books about, you know, acknowledging the fact that they're frustrated say, okay, um, Catherine, I know you're frustrated. I'm so sorry. It does seem like you're supposed to um, honor their concern. It does seem like this is taking a long time, but let me explain to you, this is why, and this is what we're going to do about it. And I'm just so sorry. And if in some cases, you know, I credit them some money back or just find some way to connect with them to diffuse the situation. And I didn't get any of that training in design school. So, you know, those people school skills are really, really important. Uh, what else do you got for me, ladies? So what counts as a project? Like you mentioned that in order, in order to be um, a good, like, business, you have to have an eight projects a year is it so what count as a project so um and this is a lot of math and you guys can kind of help me or um work along with it so you know as you're living and you gotta you gotta figure out what your bottom line is how much does it cost for you to live in this world how much is your rent how much is your car how much is your internet food clothing whatever let's say that that number is $50,000 a year. Um, a large remodel project, like I showed you that one of 50,000 was too low. <laughs> so basically that was almost a cost, right? It cost me almost 50,000 to build it, but I need some money. And it took me three months. So really the profit on that project should have been, uh, and I don't know exactly what $11,000 came out to, but it didn't come out to $15,000. So let's say that you need $50,000 a year to live, then I would need five of those projects at 15,000 because I also have to pay taxes and what if I'm wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So for me to you know, hit those sort of bottom minimums, I need, I need to be netting about 110,000 because I'm paying taxes on it and X, Y, Z, and I'm paying people. And then maybe I'm, you know, netting 70,000 a year. Um, so it depends on how much you need, but that's sort of a number that I came up with. And then if an average kitchen remodel is sometimes a 15,000, sometimes it's 30. So if you get one that's 30, then you don't need as many, or maybe it's a bonus. Maybe you wanna, you know, Keep, keep making more money. Uh, but not every single project is a large kitchen remodel. Sometimes it is a color consultant, a con consulting piece. So let me show you my website a little bit. And this is helpful for clients when they're looking the different services we offer. So um, we always do a free 20 minute Zoom. That way we can kind of get to know the clients explain the fees rather than driving all over around greater Portland and it doesn't make sense. You know, we, we, we do a free Zoom. Um, if you need 
just design help for an hour, hour and a half, it's $250 an hour, which is great, great money if you're working 40 hours a week. If you're doing <laughs> three or four of these a month, yeah, you're getting you know, $250 an hour, but you're not hitting your minimums in terms of uh, hitting your living expenses. So that's something that we keep in, uh, in mind. We charge for our design quote, which is different. Many contractors will go out there and say, uh, it'll be $100,000, you know, here, sign here. Or a designer, and a typical interior design fee, um, by the way, is probably about 90 to $175 an hour. So if you really only want me for an hour, $250 is fine. But again, to stay competitive with other interior designers, I have a 20 hour design package, which happens to work out to $175 an hour. And I'm a general contractor, I can also give you a quote. So it takes a particular mindset for the clients to understand this, but me as a designer, if they were to just hire me from PCC or wherever, I could easily charge them $3,500. And then they have to go to a contractor and price it out. That contractor may or may not. Um, so I guess my, my point is, I'm sorry, I'm not more eloquent about this, but again, I wanted to chat with you. Um, as a contractor, and I'm planning out their kitchen, and if I know what their budget is, then I know which uh, pieces to, to put in, which trades to use, to keep them on budget. So designers usually don't track the budget of what your project is, they just design it. So it's very likely that they'll design something super beautiful that doesn't, not really affordable when it comes time to build. So to go back to the amount of projects, so I would love to get, you know, six projects with a $25,000 fee at the end. That would be fantastic. However, along the way, sometimes people hire us for a few hours. So we have many clients that the total fee is $375, $1,500, $6,000. So somehow I'm hoping at the end of the year that I have at least four projects that are you know, $17,000 with a few of these other ones sprinkled in and that I'm netting a minimum, I wouldn't, this is in my head, I wanna net a minimum of $70,000 after I've paid taxes. You know, for some people that's a ton of money. For other people, that's hardly enough. You know, that's just what I particularly want. Does that, does that help? I believe so. Um, I so I'd love the to other... be able to see nodding heads. That's why I was, <laughs> but, but thanks, thanks for, for, for chatting with me there. What else? What else? Um, you... What are the working conditions look like? Oh, the prospects for um, this industry? Is that working conditions? Yeah. Like, like what? You, and like... when you go to a project, how, what does it look like here? Uh, what does it look like? Well, I guess that's very similar to what I just showed you. Um, let me see if I can get to some of these projects and show you a little bit more about what that before and after. Oh, this is a fun one. So this particular project, it started out as a closet. Um, this cute family, they've got two kids, a four-year-old and a baby, and they said they have no powder bath on their main floor. So when guests come over, they have to go up into their private areas um, to use the restroom. And could I change their closet into a half bathroom? And amazingly enough, there's a, a fairly large, um, living room behind it. So there was room to knock out the wall and expand it. This is a very atypical project for me. Usually I do these cosmetic kitchen remodels, but this was super fun. And what also was super fun is that this is a younger couple. The guy knew how to use this program called SketchUp. And he gave me this, after we talked, he gave me some beautiful drawings 
on uh, what that could look like. And that made it so much easier for me to give to my um, structural engineer and framers, et cetera. So now today he has a separate coat closet across the way and this super cool bathroom. So I hope that sort of describes um, what it's like. It's dusty at the beginning, like I, that, that other picture. Um, the client has moved out. I'm always concerned, is something going to happen? Is somebody gonna break something? I have a really good crew, usually it doesn't happen, uh, but it looks like a construction site most of the time and it's not very pretty. Um, I think there's some construction pieces here. Oh, I don't have the construction, but this is a fun before and after, I'll show it to you. Again, the, this is a nice kitchen, it, but it's not exactly what they wanted. They wanted some other features. They want a little bit more contemporary. They wanted a um, luxury vinyl tile floor. So um, now it's spectacular. So we also have another question. Would you choose this career if you could make the decision again? Um, what, if anything, would you do differently? So that's a great question. And for me, um, it did work out really, really well. It is a good 25 years after I have great graduated college that I actually get to do this. So it was a long, long haul. And that's why I'm super excited to be chatting with you guys, because I hope it doesn't take you 25 years. Um, it's the best profession for me, given my background. Um, I could have maybe become an architect. I could have um, learned more about finance and real estate and been an, a real estate developer. It's a really good profession for me it is a hard profession to make money at, especially if you just focus on the design piece. So I'm hoping if nothing else you take away from this, the creative part is really, really great. And it's really interesting. And it's really, um, I mean, I love artists and I love creative people to just have your goal as an interior designer, you will not be making enough money to live you would have to supplement your income with something else. And I don't, I don't approve of that um, way of, of living. I think that, you know, whatever work you should, you do, you should be able to, to pay for your expenses. So, and the way that the interior design industry has evolved is that all the retail stores have interior designers. You walk into any furniture store, you walk into any paint store, plumbing fixture store, they all have interior designers. What's different about being a general contractor is that you are managing all these different pieces. It is not something that you can go buy off of a shelf. So it takes a more savvy and more coordination. So whatever creative field you pursue, I highly recommend you think about that numbers piece and that budget piece and your, that cost of living piece and you make sure that they all work together. So um, I didn't have a chance before the Zoom call, but I, I have a um, list of kind of tips and uh, tips and advice and related um, careers to consider, but I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna pull it up and show you. We can just all go through it together. Downloads and chamber. I'll send this over to you. So these are related um, fields. So I, I am an interior designer. It's the general contracting piece that brought it all together that makes it more interesting and brings in enough money. Um, but that said, uh, these are other careers that you can have in this, this field. And th these are sales positions. 
you would it would is creative related but it's cabinet designer tile and flooring specialists plumbing fixtures appliances countertop fabricators uh furniture companies um dishes and accessories that would you know one sonoma those places they and again they have designers um art galleries the trades um if you're remotely handy I'm an excellent um, house cleaner and I'm an okay painter. They are making good money. And there's actually a, a shortage of um, trained contractors. The ones that are your old school, mostly guys are retiring and younger people aren't going into the trades. They don't know about them, especially women. Um, that's a, a big push right now. There's a organization called Girls Build that is doing a lot of training and a lot of um, encouragement of young women to go into the trades. But these people are making nice money, $25 an hour and more. Uh, my handyman makes, he just raised his rates to $75 an hour. And I had to tell you, I have had handyman's charge me $125 an hour. So um, the trades, carpenters, framers, drywallers, painters, electrician, uh, structural engineer, that is um, definitely you would need more training for that. Um, our structural engineer is $500 to show up at the site. And the, the plans are, I mean, I don't know, they're probably running two, two $300 an hour. So if you have that kind of background and you're good at it, I highly recommend it. Archi architectural drafters are really in, in demand, like that client I showed you, he um, did those renderings. Uh, there's different um, programs, CAD, Revit. I don't know how to do any of those. Uh, average price for architectural drafter is 65 to $85 an hour. And again, I'm, I'm super proud to say that sometimes I charge $250 an hour, but the architectural drafter and the structural engineer they're getting more hours than I would at that time. Most of my money is coming through the, um, the contracting phase. Um, appliance installers, HVAC con contractor. So those, that's basically all the trades that I work with. All right, um, my job. So what I like about my job and I somehow I've perfected it. So it really is perfect for me, but it was a very long road and I, um, definitely paid my, my dues at the School of Hard Knocks. So if I have helped you along that way, uh, avoiding some of the pitfalls, I've succeeded today. So the cool thing about being a general contractor is that you're the boss and you know a little bit about all of those trades. You don't have to be a specialist in any of them. The interior design piece is the absolute best. It's very interesting, it's really fun. And it's super exciting to see your client at the end, you know, beam and, you know, they send me pictures, look at the, this dinner I just made in your kitchen or look at, here's my family around the island. We're, we're making uh, Christmas cookies. And this is the first year ever that we've had enough room to put all the cookie sheets. I mean, that's just, um, just spectacular to have, be a part of that. So the interior design piece is really, really fun. It is again, the least, um, profitable, right? Um, the design build company, like what I have, and it's not as common. Um, I really, I think that that's a great business model. Um, and it's less common. It's a great, so to have that, that blend of both uh, the interior design piece and the contracting piece, I cannot uh, stress it enough. It worked for me, but again, if the question is, if I had to start over again, I should have maybe been looking at one of these, right? Um, Carol Hoffman's tips for and advice. There is no one right path to finding your dream career, and I am proof positive of that. And there is no such thing as a dream career. Every job has its good and bad. School is a great thing. I wasn't super excited about school in middle school and 
high school, but I loved college. It's fascinating. And um, I'm wholeheartedly in favor of education now, not, not quite in the same way that I was when I was younger. Um, and I think that this is really important. Learn lots of things, not just about your career path, but everything that remotely interests you, all of your passions, whether it's how are marbles made or um, understanding how icebergs uh, move in the ocean, um, animals, birds, cars, you know, whatever random thing that you might be interested in, I just say, go for it, learn as much as you can, and it will inform whatever it is that you do. So just being, you know, full of life and excited about life is, is half the battle. Um, try and talk with as many professionals as you can. Ask if you can job shadow for a day. I love programs like what you guys have that we can learn about all these different careers. I'm so in favor of that, that concept. Um, and we talked about this, have good people skills, have good math skills and stay curious and work hard. So um, with that, I, that's pretty much all I have to, to let you know about what I do. What, what other questions do we have? Do you have to be physically strong for being a general contractor and um, an interior designer? So um, no, you don't. I, um, and I'm a lot older than you guys. Um, so again, I, it's proof positive. It's, it's helpful. I mean, maybe I, and I'm short too, so I can't reach a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not very good at picking up, you know, heavy things, but I also have people around me who will help with that. Um, if you knew one of those trades and it's common, it's common like if you were a finished carpenter or a tile setter, you could also be a general contractor. You could do all those things that I do and you can also do the tile piece. So you would get your design piece, your contracting piece and you would be paid as the tile setter. So, you know, that would be like a little raise, um, but it's not necessary for uh, the profession. And it's a question that I get a lot. And what I tell them, because they were like, well, you know, um, this other guy came by and, you know, he's going to paint. He's, they, they asked, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, you know, I'm actually a really excellent cleaner. I might be, you know, doing some of your finishing touches at the very end. But for the most part, you know, I have the best of the best. They're going to do the heavy lifting and all those things. And my superpower is knowing how to manage them and knowing the right people and making sure that your job is on time and on budget. That's what I'm gonna do. And they're like, oh, shoot, maybe that's more important than you know, uh, being able to tile my backsplash. It's like, yeah, could be. So um, the answer is no, doesn't matter. <laughs> and another question is, what is your favorite project that you have ever done? My favorite project. Um, well, thank you for asking me. And gosh, I love all of them. Um, we just had, it's, and I have to say the, um, the pictures are my very favorite. I have a photographer at the end of each job and it's my absolute favorite. This, and I love all of them, but this is a super, super fun one. And it was a huge transformation. So I'll show you, it's a house in um, uh, Northeast Alameda. It's over a hundred years old. And as part of the kitchen remodel, we had to remove this really weird concrete pad and um, laundry room that was, uh, smacked onto the side of the house. So we had to give them another door so they could get it in and out. This is what was on the side. So he had to get that out. And that was, that's about, let's see, three or four feet of concrete that people were afraid to, to demo because they were afraid they're gonna crack their, um, their foundation. So I had to get a lot of uh, engineers and specialists out to 
reassure us that we would not knock down the house if we took that out. And then we gutted their 100-year-old kitchen in Nook. Look at that wallpaper. Mm -hmm. um, and this is stuff that I do. This, this particular picture um, was a note that I had going back and forth with the electrician. So it's hard to be on site at all times. And again, it takes a really great team with good communication. And so, um, and I can't even remember exactly, but there was a problem with this particular space. And so we're able to talk by text and FaceTime to troubleshoot things um, without necessarily having to be there all the time, which is really helpful. Breakfast neck. So there's, there's kind of like a question that goes over with that. Um, yeah. Do you ever get, a, uh, do you ever get to design a project that the clients let you just go nuts, like no cap on budget? So that's a great question. And the absent, the answer is absolutely not. Um, even the wealthiest clients, mm -hmm. and not me personally, but when I worked in LA, we had um, very, very high end clients. Sylvester Stallone was our client. I don't even know if these guys know who that is. He was a movie star, <laughs> great big movie star. Uh, Disney Corporation, I know you guys know that was our client. Um, even the wealthiest people mm. have a cap that's too much. And um, even though they say that, um, you know, do whatever you want, they, they wanted some input. So, um, and I, I'm going to finish these, these pictures a little bit and I'm going to go back to it because I just, um, there's the, that nook. So you kind of get an idea of um, the transformation of the spot. So the best job is your job. And that's why I guess I go back to, you know, make sure that you have enough money to create the world, the world and the life that you want, especially if you're a creative person. And it's a joke with um, myself and a couple of my designers. When we go to these competitions and we've been, this particular um, project was also um, nominated for Kitchen of the Year through Oregon Home Magazine. We noticed there is a very high percentage of winners who have done their own projects. So, which says to me that when you can do your own project and you don't have a client telling you, oh, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? It actually turns out better because those are the ones who really win the awards. Um, and that's also something that I try and we really pride ourselves on not bossing our clients around because they're very worried that we're gonna come in and tell them what to do and create something that they don't want. Um, we also try to encourage them to trust us uh, and trust our expertise and follow our lead because it most likely will come out better. That's been our experience. And we, we really noticed that with the competitions. Um, oh. If you can remember that one of those first drawings from uh, pictures for the brown. Um, how, what other questions do we have? Um, how do you market yourself? Um, there are three avenues primarily where we're getting our business now. Um, and I, I guess I'm going to go back to the very, very beginning, uh, 13 years ago, when I decided I was going to have interior design business, you know, what, what am I going to do? Am I, I'm going to specialize in something. Am I going to get a storefront? Uh, again, I was on a limited budget and I decided to, because I looked at office space, office space costs, would it cost me? I can't remember. Whatever it was, it added up to $14,000 a year. I was like, shoot. And again, that in long, okay, you, so you saw $250 an hour. All those years ago, I'm like, I'm going to charge $75 an hour, okay? <laughs> Do you know how long it takes to get to $14,000 with $75 an hour? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, the first, first $14,000, it just goes to the rent. I wouldn't even get, 
nothing, you know, and I just paid $600 for a website and some pictures. So I had this, and again, you know, it was really hardworking and I just bought out of the box. I got these chocolate bars from Sherwin Williams. Oh, no, no, no. Trader Joe's. All one pound Belgian chocolate bar. So it's very impressive. Great big chocolate bar. And I put a great big bow on it and a card. And I walked into Sherwin Williams, Benjamin Moore, um, Miller Paint. And I said, hi, I'm a, a paint color specialist. Can I do free color con consultations for you uh, one Saturday? And each store said, sure, no problem. That would be great. Come on in. And in fact, the Sherwin Williams on Maureen Cornell, I credit them for launching my career. They liked me so much. They said, why don't you come every Saturday? And we also have a store um, in Lake Oswego. I'm sorry, one Saturday a month, each store for two hours. I did that for five years. I met all kinds of people and they sent me business. And when, you know, one person asked me to, you know, help them with their kitchen. And so, you know, five years later, I established myself. I, again, this um, house, I figured out how to get on house and get this ranking. So today, um, a third of my customers are repeat business. A third of, of them are referral through different people. And besides having clients, I've done a lot of networking. I was in the Lake Oswego Chamber. I was in three different organizations at one point. Currently, I am still on the Cedar Mill Business Association and I'm the president. Actually, I'm, I'm going to be uh, winding off in January. I finished my two-year term. But that's actually how, um, is it Lisa? Lisa Claiborne? Is she with you guys? That's um, how She's not um, here at the school to your career anymore. We have Heather as our director. Okay. But that's how you know me. It's through the Cedar Mill Business Association. Ah. So um, I get, you know, um, they're, they're part of my referral source, right? I probably have a random email list of, of 300. So uh, repeat business referrals and then house this particular site. Um, I highly recommend it, you know, just fiddle around with it. Look, you can look for people, you can look for ideas, um, the rankings. So there's, there's different ways that you would find a designer, but one of the ways is you would go in there and you would look for a kitchen and bath designer under the, um, the zip code. And because I, I put in all those wonderful bells and whistles, I see, I am, and this changes all the time based on your algorithm, but I'm listed as number two, right? Um, so it's made it really easy for people to find me. And the other thing that I have done occasionally, I've done it again, if you give them money, um, this is where it's sponsored, they will continually put you in uh, people's feeds. So right now I have a paid feed and an organic feed, but house has definitely been um, a tremendous uh, source of business for me. And this has been interesting. I'm gonna just show you my, my personal Facebook. I don't really understand how to get the Facebook business thing going. And I guess there's, there's ways to, um, Facebook ads I heard are very easy. Um, I have a very strong social media presence. I have um, a photographer that I work with monthly. I work with several marketing consultants. I had a professional design my website and my business card, but I post three to five times a week. And I don't even do well. You guys could do so much better. You know, stories and reels, I'm really weak on. Um, but I have a very strong social media presence, not necessarily, uh, here's a picture of my, my painters, they're just so sweet, it's a father-daughter uh, um, team. Because of all those people, the past clients and the friends that I have, especially through my children, I, and again, you guys are going to laugh, it's probably hardly anything. I have 269 friends, but there are people who really know me and really like me. 
and wouldn't you know, I keep noticing, you know, um, oh, shoot, Carol just called me um, for a kitchen remodel. This is true. Her name is Carol, just like mine. I haven't talked to Carol. I don't even hardly even know Carol. I know Carol from church. Maybe the last time I saw her was 15 years ago. But we know mutual people, and I know she's following my feed. Oh, and Jennifer. Yeah, I've talked to Jennifer a couple of times, you know, and I'm realizing that um, people are noticing they don't, might not necessarily need a remodel, but they're watching my feed. Uh, hopefully it's interesting because I'm using professional photographer and I'm trying to, you know, make it not be too long or too stupid. Um, but uh, shoot, you know, Facebook and, and not so much Instagram because people my age are not on Instagram, but I'm trying with the younger people. Um, so social media is uh, also uh, the, the three-legged stool of where I'm, get, I'm getting my business. Um, tell us. So um, have you ever found gross things while designing or demoing as a general contractor? Um, not like a dead rat or anything. Um, in that job, uh, North, Northeast Alameda, and actually, I don't even think think I found. I I saw. I know that there was asbestos uh, on that uh, property because we tested. Um, but because we use licensed uh, asbestos and lead uh, abatement people, you know, they they're wearing their hazmat suits and they have their plastic out and. Um, it's not really as scary as it sounds. So no, I personally haven't. And I, I hope that I don't. <laughs> and so our last question is, do interior designers work with real estate agents? Oh, great question. Um, yes. I know, uh, especially if you go to these, um, and I know that you guys have and you're a little bit too young, but when you get into the um, professional world and you go to the marketing um, networking meetings, about a third of the people are realtors. So I know a lot of realtors. And yes, there are a good source of um, referrals right now because the construction piece takes so long. And I haven't even really even touched on that. Um, whereas to start a kitchen room or bathroom model, uh, Pre-COVID would be like a six to eight process. And then we would start maybe four to six weeks after, then maybe three months. Um, today, that is taking six to eight months. So when the realtors call too late in the game, and let's say their clients are moving in in 10 weeks, that's not long enough. So they're an okay source of business for me. They're not a tremendous source. But yes, I do get a lot of referrals referrals um anything else um if you have any more questions just put in a chat but for now we are we don't have any questions right now and okay yeah um, thank you so much so um thank you everybody i just uh, wish you well and thank you for for paying attention to to me and i hope that you found it informative I'm going to send you those um, that tips list, right? So, does everybody have your contact information? Yes, and we also have it on the the rec recording, and the, they can review also. Okay. We, yeah. Um, I'm just going to reply to the confirmation, this tips list, and then you'll have it. All right. Okay. Um, well, thank you again and happy holidays, everybody. Thank you so much.